Hey guys, Brett from Limestone Permaculture. Um, just thought I'd let you uh, in on a couple of little handy hints that we're doing with our um, spring planting. Um, it's mid-September and uh, this is all the old growth. As you can see, it's all gone to seed and uh, whilst we've saved plenty of uh, seed for um, next year's plantings, we want to start removing some of this growth here. Now, looking at this, this is our veggie system working on the forest layer system. So you've got like canopy, subcanopy, herbaceous shrub, right down to ground covers. And you get this forest layer system built into your veggie garden, doesn't matter whether it's a herb garden, makes no difference, right? It's totally scalable. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually cut down like a, a chop and drop. We're gonna literally cut out all the bigger um, plants that are going to seed to make room to put in some of the summer plantings, which are gonna be like tomatoes, capsicums, eggplants. So we thought we'd give you a bit of a, um, a run through on how we do that. And we're just gonna clear this area out now. vegetables that aren't going to be any any more productive for us we've left a lot of the uh, veggies that are still giving giving us something back like the beetroot and the carrots and um, coriander and um, parsley and whatnot um, and we're trying to find the the areas in between to now plant our tomatoes um, when we did that clear out we didn't pull them out by the roots we cut them down near the base the idea being is that we're going to keep the the root structures of all those plants that were there in the ground so they'll rot back and, and put some biomass some organic matter back into the soil so the only disruption that we're actually looking at doing is just the hole where we're going to put the tomatoes in so we'll just show you what we're going to do for the tomatoes now and we're just digging down in the one spot where we're going to put the tomato right and we're opening this area up and you can see there's a there's a, a typical root that we've left everywhere else so that's going to just rot back in the ground um, we just open the hole out a little bit there's a poor old carrot all right and we open a little area like that we've got some beautiful compost here and you can see the worms they're very active this is some nice stuff we're just going to open this out a little bit a little bit more compost Open that out. We're gonna grab our tomato. This one's a Thai pink. We're gonna peel off the bottom couple of shoots and leaves. Because the idea is, you wanna plant these down pretty deep. Push that compost back in around, not too hard, just gently back in there. Push some of that original soil back in. Now before we go any further, I usually like to water it in. So we'll just grab the watering can. Now this liquid here, this is a mixture of uh, fish, seaweed, and um, some biological liquid from our friends up at uh, Island Biologicals. This is the Vermicast liquid bicast as well. Awesome stuff. So now we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of blood and bone around the outside edge. And we're going to put some active grow mulch in around the outside just to cover that over. Create a little bit of a, a dish. Give it one more little water in. And there we have starting point to what will be a uh, indeterminate tomato. So that one's just gonna run right up across the top. It'll head right over. We should get anywhere between sort of six and 10 foot or in uh, new school, anywhere between sort of two and three meters worth of vine traipsing over that we can just tie off as we go. And you can get a tunnel effect of tomatoes. So we're gonna go through now and just plant these tomatoes out in the rest of these gaps not disrupting anywhere else, only the holes where you're putting the tomatoes. And you can see it as this, where you actually put the hole of the tomato and adding all this beautiful nutrient, mineral and, and, and bio fertilizers, you're actually inoculating sections of the actual garden. So you're not disrupting the rest of that microbial activity that's in the soil and that's really important. Okay 
guys. So basically, um, when you come to do a garden where you've already got some winter crops coming through into summer, you're trying to use that succession process. You're trying to um, make use of what's still in your garden. You shouldn't be getting there and ripping everything out and exposing all your soil. Um, one of the key factors is trying to keep organic matter in your soil. You can do that by leaving the roots in, actually in the ground. Um, the other thing is trying to keep cover on the soil. So keep your ground cover, some of the herbaceous and shrub level plants in the ground. And then, you know, thinking about what's going to happen later. So thinking succession as it goes into summer, you know, capsicums are still here, so they're coming up. But the tomatoes we just planted, they're going to come up and over. They're going to be the new canopy, which then means that you can start to plant more tender crops that don't like being in the full sun all day, even like lettuce in the middle of summer, will get in under the, the canopy of the tomato plant. So as that canopy comes up, we can then reseed again underneath. So there's never a time where the gardens are completely exposed. Anyway, guys, happy gardening and uh, go permaculture. Cheers.